All right, your next, uh, your next guy, I feel like, bro, a lot, of, a lot of you guys are here to see this guy in particular, man. Ladies and gentlemen, my good buddy, Sick Mark. Thank you, guys. Um, just another Kennedy, walking up, trying not to assassinate my pride. Um, <laughs> Maybe I'll do the killing this time. <laughs> yeah. Um, John had the pleasure of introducing me, as a lot of my friends know me as a sick mark. So now I have the uh, wonderful pressure of actually living up to that name and trying to be good. Um, disappointment comes in a lot of shapes, people. Um, this is one of them. So um, no, I, I, I got the name Sick Mark because uh, a bunch of times, let's just say I was uh, under the influence of uh, good times and um, I was a bit, uh, how do you say, enthusiastic about my uh, recognition of things that I thought were really cool. Um, and after about the 19 billion time of, that's sick, it just started to stick. Um, I tell you all that because someone if, within my circle of friends asked if I had a terminal illness and that's how I got the name. Um, I don't know if that's weirder to think that I got that because uh, I have a terminal illness or that somehow in some twisted shine of solidarity, my friends decided to give me a nickname that would constantly remind me of my morbid death. <laughs> Slowly approaching, like, there's the old cancer slug. Hey, Johnny's got 50 on you biting it before 25, man. But that's why you're sick now, right, dude? Bam. Um, yeah, so that's just that. I'd like to say something like, if terminally ill was slang too, like, would that drop me from my medical insurance or like, would the doctor be like, yo, man, your blood results came back. You know what you got? <laughs> the Slayer lyrics you fucking printed on yourself, man. So um, weird medical conditions, you know? You deal with them. Um, so anyways, thanks a lot to John for putting this on. Let's get this started. Uh, thanks. Um, I wrote my jokes down on the back of my uh, PNC bank statement. Uh, my mother gave me great advice at a young age. Uh, why waste one side of a good failure when you can double down and use both? Um, so I just got back a couple months ago. I was touring with a buddy's band of mine and a um, whole lot of fun, uh, really inspiring for me. I've not played music in a long time. Uh, you guys may remember my last cover band I was in with a really positive message. Uh, Huey Lewis and the Fox News. Any? Well, the Republican New Wave scene is still kind of building, but um, certainly some room for innovation. Not too many progressive influences. <laughs> um, but you know, we're getting there. Uh, what we would do, you know, we were probably like a lot of you sick of that goddamn liberal bias in the music industry, and we would take classic Huey songs and uh, twist them towards the truth. So uh, when Huey did uh, I Want a New Drug, uh, our positive cover was I Want a New Drug, uh, but if it's covered by Obamacare, you can shove it up your fucking ass, you goddamn communist. Um, beep, beep, beat the bill. Um, Big hit on talk radio. They, uh, they actually used all of our lyrics for talking points for about nine months. So that was a big one. Um, other artistic highlight, uh, Megan Kelly singing backing vocals on her song, Jesus Was Definitely White. Uh, just try not reading a book. Um, and then big highlight, career shaker. Got invited to the NRA benefit and uh, close with our power ballad, you can pry these guitar picks from our cold dead fingers. Um, <laughs> Rolling Stone Rave said it was a regular musical Columbine that night. We, we killed, no pun intended. Um, so yeah. <laughs> um, oh, and, and a big thing, uh, Bill O'Reilly, we all know how credible he is, uh, had informed us that uh, our record played all the way through, even in the midst of the no spin zone. So breaking some new sonic barriers. <laughs> I gotta say real quick, uh, did anyone catch when pot was getting legalized, DC, Colorado, Oregon, all that, uh, O'Reilly felt the need to come out and say, you know what, I'll, I'll, I'll come down to it. If y'all wanna smoke pot, if you wanna use cannabis, that's fine, just keep it away from me and my family. And I thought that's reasonable. Uh, but then I thought a better question, who the fuck is trying to smoke weed with Bill O'Reilly? I just love that he has this idea that like people are dying to do it. And that's when I can be like some pothead guidance counselor going like, O'Reilly? I mean, son, that's like the junior community college of people to smoke pot with. Like, 
Aim for Snoop Dogg or at least Alex Jones. You know that shit's got to be interesting, if not outright terrifying, but <laughs> something. But I just imagine if that's actually true, like little kids outside of Fox Studios are like pelting O'Reilly instead of with eggs, like 20 sacks of kush. We're like, yeah, we're going to stone you harder than a Muslim woman who wants an education. Wow, bam. <laughs> Too much on that last one? <laughs> Let's see how much further we can push it. Um, so I, a lot of my musician buddies are here. Is anyone else as sick as I am? As sick, this guy's on my side. Anyone else as sick as all their hipster friends telling you that like they were down with police brutality before it went mainstream? You know what I mean? <laughs> and you gotta admit, it's only the summer of 2015, but this is like watershed Sergeant Pepper era of like racist police, <laughs> like just cops. And, uh, yeah, I don't know, like, somehow I have to give these guys respect because they've been in the scene, you know, longer than, like, before Rodney King had his first big hit or something, man. It's just... <laughs> I'm still going to go. Um, so Rodney was on one of those shitty celebrity rehab shows, and I was just like, can we maybe try to see that this dude's like fucking strife was a little more important than like the drummer of Guns N' Roses, like just a little bit. But then I thought, okay, well maybe instead of a reality show we could do like uh, a second trial, you know, uh, but we can still put it on VH1. I know where all this is ending up. Um, but maybe it was something like instead of riding the cash cab, we can put him back in this element but call it the clash cab, right? And what he does is uh, picks up white people and instead of giving them money for right answers, every time they get a wrong one, uh, a member of the Black Panther Party shows up and beats the living shit out of them, you know? And then in his best, like, Republican, that's the way life goes, shrug, Rodney can just go, stupid motherfucker didn't even know the capital of North Dakota. Man, he practically had it coming, all right? I didn't see a thing. Um, but anyways, with the same stuff, I know it's really cool to, like, delete all your Facebook friends that don't agree with like 150% of every word and thought you've ever had. But um, does anyone keep that one person around who like you could go through a miscarriage, but like you would see the shit that they write about life. You're like, well, it could always be worse, man. Um, yeah, I had one of those guys and uh, this was actually a friend of a friend and this dude insisted during the Baltimore riots um, referring to the black protesters as ghetto goblins. Um, I like a good first. Race, racists don't get usually that creative. I like that. And this is also the first time I'd ever got to say, do I tell this dude that that's kind of weirdly racist or do I tell them that this actually isn't a live reenactment of a Dungeons and Dragons game? Um, in case he didn't know. Uh, but just in case, maybe he had that racist misprint that was called Dungeons and Grand Dragons and he just never got the right one. I think I actually have his character sheet here. And I will be happy to read it for you. Um, first of all, uh, I didn't really like my speech about elfin privilege in Rivendale. Uh, long discussion about that. Uh, under race, we were looking for goblin, elf, dwarf. Uh, he wrote untainted purity. Um, I'm sure it was his struggle. Uh, under skill, uh, we were looking for ranger, archer. Uh, instead of spellcaster, he went with imperial wizard. That was another strength. Do you know what this guy said when I asked if this character had any black magic? You know what he said? He goes, what's that? The ability to make a child support payment magically disappear? I was like, dude! <laughs> Jesus Christ, man! But in his defense, I think Jeb Bush made the same mistake at a Senate conference. So if anyone wants to know why they started calling him the old ghetto goblin slayer uh, at legislation, that was probably it. Um, and then his special attack, he wrote the crack cocaine epidemic. That was another odd one. <laughs> All right, let me wrap it up with this one. Um, I know I talk a lot about some crazy shit, folks. I'm just looking out for y'all's safety, all right? The last thing I really want you to know is that we got to keep an eye on North Korea, all right? We really got to. Good, don't laugh. I'm dead serious, all right? Because... When you decide to run a regime that is this extreme, unparalleledly, unrestricted extreme, you have got to be open to the idea of hosting the X Games one of these years. I mean, Kim Jong Un on a snowboard? How many X's can you fit in the word extreme? All right, I can see Obama right now, fellow Americans. 
we have to pull a 540 McTwist over our current foreign policy strategy. We can barely pull a 180 <laughs> pop shove it as it is, all right? This is unparalleled. And you know what? I got one simple rule. If you land a 900, you get a nuclear missile, all right? I don't care what you do. Just take it. I'll rally behind Tony Hawk, and I know you all too. Thanks a lot, guys. <laughs> Sick set, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>